Hi everyone, I'm Kathy Hills, Senior Director of Communications and Engagement for HR. And I'm Ramona Agrella, Associate Chancellor and Chief Human Resource Executive. It's our pleasure to be with you today in this fireside chat. Uh, we'd like to talk to you about some of the information for employees in regards to the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak. Yeah, we know there's a lot of questions that everybody has and while things are changing rapidly, we wanna take this opportunity to provide you what we know so far today. So we have uh, quite a few questions that we'd like to address on behalf of our employees. And uh, Ramona, maybe you can start by just giving us a summary of the current situation. Where are we as far as the university is concerned? So right now, from a staff perspective, the university is operating as it normally does. Um, so we're still operating normally, but the situation is evolving rapidly. Right now, what we're trying to do is practice social distancing and getting staff to work remotely from home. And there are two websites that um, were, they'll be constantly updated, so you'll get a lot of information. It's changing rapidly. Uh, those two websites are uci.edu slash coronavirus and hr.uci.edu slash coronavirus. Check them frequently for the most up-to-date information. The um, HR website provides information specifically for employees and supervisors that help them navigate this crisis. So, um, one thing that's been on everyone's mind is telecommuting. Can you give us just a little bit of background on telecommuting, how it works, and how we're going to address leave situations? Absolutely. So the purpose behind telecommuting, it's one of the programs instituted as far as social distancing. The purpose is to try to get people as far apart from one another, and by the way, we are not practicing social distancing, so we have so to do be careful. So do as we say, not, not as, as we, we do. do. Yeah. Um, the idea is to try to keep people as far apart from each other. Six feet is the recommendation. So one of the tools that we created was telecommuting. And this is a special program just to address the COVID-19 issue. And so we have been working diligently with all the supervisors and leaders across the campus. We've developed guidelines and an agreement. Those information has been sent out to all the supervisors and leaders. We sent out a zot mail to employees today advising them of this as well. This telecommuting will stay into effect until April 5th, and that's really what we're trying to do is get most of the staff off the campus, still working, but working remotely until April 5th, and then we'll reevaluate to see if we need to extend it. Um, and as people are working from home, they're expected to do their job just like they normally did, but in the comfort of their homes and in their pajamas if they so choose. <laughs> With their fur babies. <laughs> um, so. Working on site, not everybody is going to be able to telecommute. Right. We, we have certain critical functions, and we do have people still here at the campus, and of course we have people at our medical center and our ambulatory clinics. Can you talk to that just for a minute? Actually, thank you, Kathy. And I just want to take a moment to um, express our appreciation for all those employees who have to come to work in this time. I know their stress about the COVID virus and how it's transmitted is stressing everybody out. And we really appreciate those employees who are coming to work and serving our patients and serving our community. So thank you for that. Um, so critical operations still have to continue. Okay. And so each dean, vice chancellor, and chief has gone through their organization to identify those operations that have to continue even though we're doing the social distancing. And so employees who perform those critical functions have been asked to continue to come to work. But even though you're here at work, we still want to remind you to practice safe um, hygiene habits. So wash your hands frequently, drink lots of water, keep the social distancing, the six feet apart from one another. All of those tips that we've seen, cover your mouth when you cough and when you sneeze, use a handkerchief or do the elbow um, mechanism. Do diff you know, make sure you're paying attention to those type of things. Um, the services on campus have been curtailed a little bit. Grab and go food is now an option. There's no more in room or in room, in um, uh, space dining. It's yeah. all kind of just grab and go. So just make sure you're practicing safe personal hygiene habits. But again, we really appreciate you all being here and coming and pitching in. And if you are on site, um, maybe work as a team to disinfect common areas and don't share um, your keyboards, right. phones, right. 
uh, your computer pens, mouse, anything pens. that um, could potentially spread the virus or even colds and flus. I mean, yeah. at some point, this isn't just about the one thing, right? right. Personal hygiene habits are good all, all year the time. round. Yeah, also pay attention to what you're putting in your mouth. Like, I'm horrible. I put pins in my mouth all the time. That's probably something you got to stop doing. And if you're doing that, make sure you're not leaving it out where anybody else can pick it up. We have a lot of questions coming in about leave and pay, and there was an executive order from President Napolitano that came out yesterday. Can you summarize the leave policy and the pay policy for everyone? Yeah, so this is one of those things that have been evolving frequently, and one direction came out, then another direction came out, and another. So for today, as we know it, right now what the president has authorized is 128 paid administrative leave hours for people that are impacted by the coronavirus. And that could be an employee who has to um, go, uh, who's been told to go work remotely, but maybe they can't. Operationally, they just can't do it for whatever reason. They may use the 128 hours. This also applies to students. So if we're telling our student workers to no longer come to work, but we can't set up some telecommuting arrangements with them, then they can use the 128 hours, but prorated for their appointment types. It's also for anybody who unfortunately becomes ill because of the coronavirus, which we hope, and so far, knock on wood, that hasn't been the case here on the campus. But they would be eligible to use this 128 hours, or if they have to care for a family member that might have become ill. Again, we hope and pray that doesn't happen. The other area which we know has just happened last week is where all the uh, Orange County and LA County school districts closed. And so a lot of our um, staff members or our families or parents are now struggling with trying to figure out daycare. So they may have to stay home to take care of their school aged children. Again, the 128 hours can go for that. The executive order limits the amount of time we can use that 128 hours. It has to be used before the end of December, but even more importantly, it requires prior approval from your supervisor. Employees just can't call out and say they want to use the leave. They need to work with their supervisor, schedule it to the extent they can, make sure there's coverage. Even if you're telecommuting and you need to take time off for a COVID-related issue, make sure you connect with your supervisor because we want to make sure that it's properly documented and that you get the pre-approval. So that's important, don't forget. Mm -hmm. For people who are not full-time staff members, they can still use the hours as well, right? Absolutely. It applies to everybody, including our healthcare workers, but like students and part-time workers, it's prorated based on the hours that you work. Our healthcare workers are also eligible for this time, but again, they need to come to work. It's really, really important that they be mindful of we need to still serve the patients of Orange County. So we need them there at work, but we also understand they might be caught in some of these COVID issues as well. So the leave is there for them as well, but again, get your supervisor's approval first. Okay, so we answered a lot of questions about uh, leave and people who have to work on site, telecommuting. Now we'd like to address the top questions that have been submitted by staff over the last seven or eight days. Right. All right, so I collected all the questions <laughs> <Lucky> and <you. laughs> um, sorted through them, and here we go. These okay. are the top questions that staff want Should we do answered. like a Letterman thing? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, the, I, no, you I'm know, I thought about that. I yeah. could throw it and have the, the wall break back here. So <laughs> and Most people don't know who Letterman is anymore, but oh well. Okay, go, moving on. All right, so um, from one of our staff members out there, I have a staff member that is unable to telecommute. How do I handle the situation? Okay, again, a um, couple of options. If they have to perform a critical function, then they can come into work to perform that critical function. But again, want you to think twice about that if it's truly a critical function. And if that's the case, then let's make sure we practice social distancing again. Um, make sure we're cleaning surfaces, that type of thing. But if it's not a critical function, and but they can't remote in for whatever reason, then they would be eligible to receive some of this leave time. With the supervisor's approval, they can use some of the administrative leave time. So we've heard it a few times. Remember, get that supervisor <laughs> yeah. approval. If you get so nothing you get else, credit. yeah, nothing else from this session, <laughs> like, get your supervisor's approval. Maybe we can put that graphic behind <laughs> us. Get supervisor <laughs> approval. Okay, uh, question number two. Um, how do I report a suspected case of coronavirus? Yeah, so that's actually important. So we don't necessarily want you to report to us things that you hear about in your community, in your neighborhood, that type of thing, that we don't need to know about. Um, but if we know that there might be an issue on campus, like your coworker or yourself, feel like you may have been exposed to the coronavirus, first of all, 
don't come into work. Now again, you're probably telecommuting anyway, but don't come into work. What we want you to do is we want you to call your supervisor, let them know that you think you might have been exposed to the coronavirus, and then your supervisor will let me know. And I'm keeping a log along with my team of all the uh, presumptive cases of the coronavirus, just so we can keep track of things. And then after that, we'll call you and make sure you're okay and kind of keep up with you on your status. Okay, so we've made it really easy for people to report either suspected cases or confirmed cases. If you go to hr.uci.edu slash coronavirus, you'll see one of the buttons says report. And if you click on that, it will give you all the instructions that you need to report a case. Uh, you as an employee can report or you can go through your supervisor to report. Absolutely. And actually, if you just go to the uci.edu or UCIHR website, it'll take you right to the, there's a big, big square there. You can just click that, take you to the coronavirus page. Um, so student workers, there's been a lot of questions because they're handled a little bit differently right. um, than uh, career workers and also other non-career workers. Um, are they eligible for the paid administrative leave? We touched on that yeah. a little bit. Can we just confirm that because we've got a lot of questions. And the other question that's related to that is, is there a plan to help student workers who have been put out of work? So a lot of questions, but we have a lot of answers. So yes, student workers are eligible for pretty much all the programs that we've offered. So they're eligible for telecommuting if that works for your organization. They are eligible for the 120, for a prorated share of the 128 hours. Um, I think it's about 64 hours that they have, el that they're eligible to use. Again, with supervisor's approval. Um, <laughs> And um, what we're also trying to do is we know that the um, students need the work, right? They need the money. Yeah. I personally have two college aid students who are currently unemployed at the moment because of the coronavirus. So I know how important it is to keep our students working. And so what we also are doing is we're collecting names. We're creating a student worker pool. So there are some departments that can't use their students anymore because they shut down, for example, athletics. But there are other departments, like at the medical center, where we could actually use the students to help out in some yeah, of our capacity. Idea. So we're creating a pool of workers so that we can then redeploy them elsewhere in the organization. So if you're a student worker, don't be surprised if one day you're getting a call and being asked if maybe you'd like to go help out at the medical center. Yes, yeah, so if you need to get a hold of the forms, we have a colleague that you can contact, Elizabeth Goodwin and her email address is goodwine. It's the easiest That's a way great to remember email it, address. right? It's, she <laughs> got the lottery on the <laughs> UCI net ID. So goodwine at uci.edu. That's for Elizabeth Goodwin, and she'll set you up with the um, links to either submit information for students who are looking for work or to put in your need for additional workers, and we can kind of do a matchmaking service yeah. for everybody. I think yeah. it's a fantastic idea. So by the way, if you're a supervisor and you have some work we could use, please reach out. We need to know what those jobs are. Question number four, can employees go back and forth on campus if they have a need? So right now the campus is open. So um, if you need to pick up something, so for example, you're working remotely and you forgot a file. Um, we tried to move everything to electronic, but there are still some paper files. So if you need to go into the office to pick something up, of course you can do that. Um, but I would just make sure that when you're here, you stay very, you just stay for what you need and then you leave and then you practice the social distancing. Um, so HR, our team, mm -hmm. sent out a work from home agreement specific to the COVID-19 situation. Right. Um, we're calling it the short-term telecommuting agreement. We're calling it the COVID short-term telecommuting <laughs> oh, agreement. <laughs> COVID-19 short-term. See, everything changes yep. fast. Yep, yep. And if the staff member is already telecommuting and they have an agreement on file, do they need to fill out this new form? Yes. So all prior telecommuting agreements are sort of suspended right now. And so if you're going to, because of the special situation. So everybody's being asked to fill out a new COVID-19 short-term telecommuting form. Again, this process we're hoping we'll, we'll reevaluate on April 5th. So that's, that's short-term. Now, technically, if you can, you can extend it to the end of May if you need to, but then we'll reevaluate. So all prior telecommuting agreements are on hold and we're moving into this one. 
And where can people get more information about that? I don't know. Maybe the HR <laughs> website. <laughs> HR.uci.edu slash coronavirus. <laughs> we'll say it so many times yeah. that everybody okay, will know Okay, so there's it. two things you need to get out <laughs> of this. Like a small world song. <laughs> yeah, check with your supervisor and go to the HR website. There yes, you go. Exactly. Those are the two things you need to learn from this. So question number six, there are staff who work on the front lines and in areas which are high level engage of engagement with the public. Uh, what are some tips that are being offered to keep them well and prevent any transmission of the coronavirus? Right, again, thank you to all of you staff members that are working on the front lines. We really do appreciate it. So our clinical health healthcare workers are really, um, they do this all the time. They're professionals, yeah. they know how to handle this. And the medical center staff and the health science or health affairs staff have been very good about getting information out, holding town halls, having information sessions, getting out information. So I think they know what they need to do and I think they've got that covered. Um, for our non-clinical employees, again, I offer the same things we've been telling everybody else, practice social distancing. Okay, so maybe there's three things. The HR website, ask your supervisor and social distancing. But practice social distancing, wash your hands, singing happy birthday. I was doing that, that's kind of fun yeah, to the, do. The Peter the Anteater video yeah, is great. That's great. For that. um, make sure your washing surface is down with the, um, with the bleach wipes if you have them, if you can find them at the grocery store. I yep. wasn't able to do that this weekend. Um, and then avoid sharing phones, keyboards, computer mouses, pens, all that type of stuff. So, um, Number seven, should an employee become exposed to someone um, with a presumptive or positive coronavirus case, um, what should they do? So if you think you've possibly been exposed to somebody, whether it's here or at home or in the community, again, stay home and contact your healthcare provider. Um, those are important. Call your health care provider. Don't go into the office. Don't go into urgent care. Don't go into the emergency room. Call your health care provider. They will walk you through the steps to see to assess your um, level of need. The second thing you need to do then is call your supervisor and just let them know because then we're going to have you on home isolation. Again, if you're telecommuting, you're already home, so you don't necessarily need to do anything differently except with your own family members. And again, call your health care provider and they'll walk you through that. Okay, um, we're down to our last couple questions Aww. here. No, we've just got a few more. <laughs> Hang with us for just a few more moments. Um, what if I become exposed in the workplace? And I know that this happened here um, as an employee. What can I do? Right, again, so far, knock on wood, we have no cases no of cases. that here. Um, but if you think you've been exposed at work, again, same thing, stay home and then call your supervisor. Notice I didn't say call your healthcare provider on this one. I want you to call your supervisor first because this could potentially be a worker's compensation claim in which we would manage your care from that end. So call your supervisor if you think you've been exposed here at work and we'll take it from there. Oh, and then the supervisors call your HR business partner and we'll help you out. Okay, last question. Okay. I'm ready. Um, are there any wellness programs or other tools that employees can use and engage in during this period where we're socially distanced? Yeah, so um, UCI Health has got some resources on their website, but guess where you can find more resources? Mm. The HR website. <laughs> we have lots of information. Our EAP provider has provided some really helpful tools and resources, some um, web cam not webcams, what am I thinking of? Web webinars. webinars. Um, fact sheets, videos, it's all there on the HR website to help people out. Yeah, we've already found only in this first day that a lot of staff members are reaching out to each other with fun messages or just a quick hello. And I think that really helps the sort of emotional part of yeah. the social distancing in this case. So yeah. I was happy to see that today. We had our first, today in HR was our first telecommuting day. We first, everybody was telecommuting. And one of our staff members sent out an email that says, happy first day of telecommuting. <laughs> and that just got everybody kind of in there and engaged. Another staff member used is the Skype for, used it, used the Skype for business and sent out um, a question, sort of like an engagement question. Um, That's excellent. Yeah, trying to get people first thing in the morning, getting people engaged, talking to each other virtually. Um, we all, in our HR team, we had a, a conference call right at eight o'clock in the morning. Um, so it's just keeping people engaged in, in communication so they don't feel so isolated. And um, as the engagement lead here at right. UCI, I can let you know that 
our team is working this week on coming up with some activities and some pulse surveys and things like that to help everyone stay engaged while we're telecommuting for a, in large part. Uh, more of that to come. And again, check the websites. Website, That's yeah. where you're going to find everything as it changes. It literally is changing. It feels like by the minute, it's probably more like by the half hour, but, <laughs> but it's fast. So yeah. that's where you're going to get everything. Um, some practical advice. Uh, I was talking to our wellness coordinator. And if you're working at home, telecommuting, get up at least once mm -hmm. an hour. Uh, do a few stretches. Take a few steps. Walk a little bit. Um, anything to um, make sure that you're still practicing ergonomics and some healthy habits uh, while you're at home. It's much easier, I think, to forget about that um, when you're telecommuting. So um, another important few thing, reminders. yeah, another important thing is to try to keep your routine intact as much as possible. So get up at the same time you did every morning. Don't go drive to work. That would be that would be silly. But you know, there's a commercial about somebody who does a commute to the house. I mean, <laughs> that makes you feel better. Go ahead and do that. But get dressed like you're going to work. Feel like, get, get, have the routine in place so that you don't feel so discombobulated or out of sync. Yeah, I think that's important. Yeah. Okay, so these resources, as well as others that we have mentioned here, um, are available 24-7 uh, on our websites. Again, I'll mention them. uci.edu slash coronavirus and hr.uci.edu slash coronavirus. Um, the health and safety of our employees is Absolutely. our uh, number one priority. And um, just please follow those healthy hygiene guidelines. Do you want to add yeah, some and I just want closing some, thoughts? Yeah, for a lot of us, we're so focused on our jobs and what we have to do to, for the university. But take a moment to take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Figure out what it takes for you to feel grounded, for you to feel secure, for you to feel safe. Focus on you first, because if you're not feeling well, then you're not going to be able to help anybody else. Make sure you're getting enough rest. Again, drinking a lot of fluids. Take care of yourself, and then we'll then you can help work for us. Words of wisdom. So everyone, stay healthy out there, and uh, we'll speak with you soon. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.